So let's get into today's session. So welcome to It's Your Time. It's time to podcast. It's your time to podcast. Like I said, I'm Kathy Heller. This is Colleen Arnell. Colleen runs my team. She's been with me for almost two years at this point. She is one of my favorite people. I said that before, and she's brilliant. She um, she knows a lot about a lot of things. So I think that together we can probably offer you some really good value. So I want to start by telling you, just in case you don't know, who the heck I am and what this story is. Like, what is the story of this girl? So five years ago, I was 37. I'm now 43. I just turned 43. And when I was 37, I had just had my third daughter. I went through lots of fertility treatment. That is a story for a different day. But I had my third daughter and we, um, we lived on a very noisy street, which is, <laughs> it starts to become relevant to this story. If anybody knows Los Angeles, we lived on Olympic, which is a main thoroughfare, um, right in front of a bus stop. And uh, we were trying to make ends meet. And my husband had a day job and I was a songwriter. I used to write music for film and TV, but I didn't have an audience because I was a mommy. So I wasn't touring and I wasn't playing live shows. I was writing sort of behind the scenes music. And I had this fun job that I was able to make some money writing songs for Pretty Little Liars and shows like Younger and Switched at Birth and Grey's Anatomy. And a lot of my friends used to say, how did you do that? Like, how did you have this job that doesn't feel like a job? And I said, I, well, this, I did this and then I tried this. And then, you know, there's a lot between you and Beyonce, right? Like if you want to be a chef, you don't have to just be Rachel Ray overnight. Like there's so many ways you can get paid to do what you love. And so a friend of mine said, you should turn that into a podcast. That should be a whole podcast. And I said to my husband, what do you think? And he came up with this title, don't keep your day job. Because so often when you're a creative person and you have a passion for making apps, or you think about how good you are at, at gardening, people say, don't quit your day job, right? So he said, what if you called it, don't keep your day job? And I said, okay. And I thought, I really am passionate about this. Like, I really do feel that so many people, they check all the boxes, they work super hard, they get decent grades through high school so that they can get into a good college. And then somewhere around the age of like 29 or 36, they're walking from the car to the office and they're like, I don't understand what went wrong. I did good and I got a job and I have a 401k. Why am I so unhappy? Because I, I, I don't feel like I should be this unhappy. I wanna be happy. And so I always felt like people are really creative inside and probably want to do so many other things. And so I thought maybe I'll start this podcast because maybe by the end of every episode, maybe like eight people will be inspired. And so I said, let's try it. So here I am with a two week old, a three year old and a four and a half year old. And I say to my husband, oh, this will be so easy. You guys just step out for like an hour. I'm going to go inside the closet which wasn't even a walk-in closet. It was just a closet with those like accordion doors. And I was sitting with the computer on the shoe rack. And I was just like, hey, this is Kathy Heller. Welcome to Don't Keep Your Day Job. You know, I really believe that every person deserves to feel happy. And here are some of the things that I have noticed. And oh my gosh, I heard the car zooming outside and I started to get really tense. Like, oh, was that being picked up on the recording? So I text my husband, give me another hour. I'm going to re-record it. And then when I re-recorded it, I thought, oh, forget it. You know what? There's something I said the first time I recorded it that I forgot to mention this time. Let me text him again. I kept re-recording that episode. I recorded it eight times that day. And I said, that's it. I'm not doing this. This is hell on earth. I've never been so in my head. I've never been so self-conscious. I'm not doing this. I don't know who I was thinking I was. I don't even have any listeners. I don't have social media at all. I don't have an email list. I'm not a famous person. I don't have a best-selling book. And this is insane and I'm not doing. It. So I mentioned my producer, Emma. I had met Emma through a friend. At this point, she was interning for a friend of mine. And I texted her and said, forget it, the hell with it. I thought I was gonna start a podcast and I'm not. It's too hard, it's too much work. And she said, I don't know. I mean, what if you just did it messy? Like, what if you just put out one of those passes of it and just see how it goes? And I thought, no, she doesn't understand. Anyway, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I decided, oh, what the hell? Let me do like a few of these, but I'm not gonna do it that other way. I'm just gonna let it be however it is, however good it comes out, that's gonna be good enough. 
So I put it out, you guys, and it was banana town. It was bananas. Um, people started listening to it. People started telling me that they were so touched by how genuinely it seemed like I cared. And I didn't have famous guests. Like now I have famous guests. In fact, this week, this Thursday, Chelsea Clinton's episode will drop on my podcast. I've interviewed Deepak Chopra. I've interviewed Matthew McConaughey. I've had so many cool people on my show. We'll get to that. But I had no one famous in the beginning. If you go all the way back, I had like a friend of mine who owned a bakery in San Francisco. And I thought that was so cool because it showed people what's possible. I had a friend of mine who had directed one episode of a TV show and she's a woman. And I thought that was cool to show female directors. I had things like that, right? And oh my gosh, oh my golly, people started listening to the show. I got my first sponsor was Blue Apron. Let's give a shout out to Blue Apron for taking a chance on me. And then they came back and said, you know, Kath, people seem to uh, buy when you talk about it. Because even though you have a small audience, you have a really engaged audience. And you guys, we're going to talk about that today because I didn't understand what it meant to have an engaged audience. I didn't realize that depth is actually superior to width. And so we're going to talk about why podcasting changed my life. But lo and behold, it did. And now it's five years later and my husband was able to quit his job and focus on comedy, stand-up comedy. And um, we started making millions of dollars, millions with an M, with an S at the end. And uh, we moved up to this beautiful house on the west side of Los Angeles. And my kids go to a fancy dancy private school. And I grew up um, with parents who were divorced and my mom was a single mom. And there were times where we literally couldn't pay the electric bill. And thank God um, I worked two jobs in high school. And um, my husband, uh, his dad passed away in 1987 and they lived in this little rent controlled building until his mom died. She lived there for 52 years. So the two of us kind of scratch our heads looking at each other say, oh my goodness, this is just such an incredible gift. But there have been so many other gifts than the money. It's really, holy cow, we're going to get into what some of those gifts are. But it's amazing how there used to be a cost to entry for you to have a spot at the table, right? Like back in the day, if you wanted to have an opinion, if you wanted to have authority, if you wanted to have an audience, you needed NBC to give you a time slot. You needed Simon and Schuster to give you a book deal. But now if you, and after this, you're going to start to see things in a different way. If you go to iTunes and you go to the podcast page, it says, submit your own podcast. Like you can have a podcast and so does Rob Lowe and Katie Couric and you can too. It's amazing that we can establish authority and a platform in such a beautiful way. And we're going to talk today about why podcasting makes so much sense nowadays. And I'll give you a little teaser. You know, it used to be that advertisers could make money from putting ads in television shows because remember when we didn't have iPhones and there wasn't something constantly distracting you? So it used to be that you could watch an episode of Friends and Crest Toothpaste would be interrupting your show to tell you about this new sparkly toothpaste that they have. And it would work on some level because people had to watch the ads. But then people started to DVR shows. Then people started to watch streaming services without ads. And the advertisers started to go, hmm, what are we going to do? And they started looking around for where they could double down and make headway and it turns out that if you do your research, they found that the depth, again, means more than the width. And so they have started focusing all of their energy in podcasting because we will buy from those that we know, from those that we trust. And with a podcast, you know, it's one thing if you're scrolling on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, if something catches your attention for 30 whole seconds, that's amazing, right? But the audience of a podcast, these are people self-selecting that they want to listen for 40 minutes, an hour, and they want to listen again and again and again. And so the engagement is there and the intimacy is there. So if Blue Apron is your sponsor or Casper Mattress is your sponsor, they see a huge ROI. And for all the ladies in the house, 
what they have shown in the data is that women tend to make more purchases than men. So advertisers are looking for women who have a point of view, who have an engaged audience. And that just is something that everyone really needs to get about why a lot of attention is moving into podcasting. And whether or not you have ads on your show or not, understand what it is to have that intimacy and engagement with your audience. In fact, if you think about a show right now that's on CBS or ABC or NBC, you probably don't know them. Like this, actually this afternoon, today, um, after I do this, I'm going to interview Justine Bateman, who was one of the stars of a show that I grew up watching, Family Ties. Well, there was a time where we were all gathered around the TV at eight o'clock watching Family Ties or Silver Spoons or The Facts of Life. That is not the case now. So if everybody is being pulled in a million different places and you're thinking about creating content, why not create content where people have a habit of coming back and listening to the podcaster? Think about the last time you went to YouTube you might have Googled how to fold a bed sheet, or you might have Googled recipes for gluten-free quesadillas, and you might have found your way to a YouTube video, but did you subscribe to the channel and watch every single video? Because the habits of podcast listeners show that they are growth-oriented. In fact, on my audience alone, we've, we've run the data. 87% of my audience has a four-year university degree. And by and large, it looks as though the collective audience of podcasters are people who are invested in self-growth and they are curious and they are interested in bettering their life and understanding the world in a deeper way. So you are self-selecting a medium where you are going to have a different level of concentration around intimacy. And I think that we haven't even started yet, you guys, but if you're not already excited about what I'm saying, I think you should start to see the light bulbs going off because this is really where attention, real attention is going. It's going in podcasts. And again, it's also how we consume it. When people listen to a podcast, they have earbuds in their ears. They feel as though this is their person talking right to them. They take this podcast with them Every time they drive to work, every time they're on the treadmill, it becomes a relationship. It becomes a part of their life in a way that we don't have that kind of relationship to, to YouTube or to Instagram, because let's face it, when we're scrolling, we are multitasking. But when you are multitasking while listening, you're absorbing more because your eyes aren't going everywhere. You're consuming it on a much more intimate, deeper level. Colleen, anything you wanna say before we dive into today's actual curriculum and lesson plan? Well, welcome everyone. We're so, so happy to have you here. And like Kathy says, it's so cool we live in an era now where this is accessible for all of us. It literally is an equal playing field. And sometimes our ego self will wanna say, oh, but I'm not, you know, I'm not famous, I'm not this, but really like Kathy said, she got started. Ground zero in her closet, three young kids just five years ago. And it's all possible. It's you don't need fancy, you don't need magic, you don't need advanced degrees, you don't need anything but your own presence and heart. And when you bring that and you share that, and people get to put that in their ears, it is extraordinary. Not only how fulfilling and impactful it feels for you, but also the lives that you get to change in the process. Mm. So good. Thank you, Colleen. We'll come back to you uh, over and over again, because I want to keep hearing from you. Um, so let's go over a few things. You guys are going to get a workbook. If you haven't already found it, we'll make sure that you know where to find it at the end, because you're going to have uh, homework questions at the end. And by doing your homework, A, it's going to help you, which is why you're here to actually implement this information. And you're also going to have a possibility of winning. We're going to tell you what the prizes are at the end, but you may as well do your homework because it helps you and it enters you into a raffle. So we'll make sure that you get these. Um, I also want you to know the following, which is 
we are all not new to social media. And so there is a part of you that might be like, she seems really nice, but I just know it at the end of this, she's got to sell me something. And I'm going to tell you two things. Number one, correct. We do a full podcast program. So I'm just letting you know a hundred percent. And what I also want you to know is we design, just like I designed my podcast to be free and to have tremendous value. We design these boot camps to be free and have tremendous value. And by golly, we have a great reputation for going over such good content in free boot camps that people say, Thank you, Kathy Heller. I really got a lot out of that. So for some of you, you're going to go through this boot camp and say, I'm full. My tummy is full. I'm pumped. My parents know. My whole community knows. I'm doing this thing. I've been talking about nonstop and I got what I need and you're done. And that's really the point of the boot camp. That's the point of it. For some of you, you're going to be like, I am kind of obsessed with Kathy. I think it's her hair. No, I think it's the freckles. No, I'm just kidding. But some of you are going to say, I want to do this with Kathy. Like I want to be with her live on video. I don't care what else is happening. I just want to go through the process of doing the podcast with that mentorship. And we will have that for you too. So there's something for everyone. Just want to say that now, but we will talk about that later because it's not the point of what we're doing today. Okay, so let's talk about podcasting versus YouTube, just so we make this concrete. All right, are you ready? Here we go. So with podcasting, how many, tell me in the chat, how many podcasts do you think there are? How many podcasts do you think exist in the world, right? Seems like everyone is starting a podcast now, right? We've got the Smart List guys. We've got the Sean Hayes, Will Arnett, right? We got, the, we got people everywhere starting podcasts about all kinds of things from politics to news to marriage to mindfulness. How many do you think that there are? So the answer is, some of you are getting close. So the answer is that there are 2 million podcasts. All right, 2 million does anyone have an idea how many YouTube channels there are, right? That would be the equivalent. How many YouTube channels are there? The answer is 37 million. So I'm not good at math, really not. I'll tell you that story another time, but I can tell you that 37 million is a lot more times 2 million, okay? Also, let's go further. How many total podcast episodes are there of these 2 million podcasts? How many episodes exist total? Does anyone know the answer? The answer is 48 million episodes. Of these 2 million shows, collectively, there are 48 million podcast episodes that are out there. Does anyone want to guess how many videos are on YouTube? Does anyone want to guess? Anybody? All right. 149 billion with a B. With a B, with a B. That, Dr. Evil, that is really a very big difference. 48 million episodes of podcasts. And one and 149 billion YouTube videos. So one is like an ocean and you're like a drop in there, right? And one is more like, hang on a minute. This is already a lot, but very different. In fact, if your episode of a podcast gets more than 124, not 124,000, but 124 downloads in a whole month total, let's say you do an episode a week, and every episode combined gets 124 downloads, you're in the top 50% of podcasters. Because let me tell you the good news. Podcasting is an art form that cares about genuine engagement. This is not about vanity numbers. This is why it didn't matter that I didn't have a social media account. Because this is not about being cool. It's not about how many followers. It's about, is there really an engaged audience? And if you have 124 total downloads 
in a month, that puts you in the top 50% of podcasts. Now, let me tell you what's also exciting. If you, and we're going to talk about it, if you are extremely enthusiastic like me, like if I do something, I'm all the hell in. So we get almost a million downloads a month. And that puts us in the top 1% of the 1%. Ooh. No, that's really cool. But it wasn't actually hard because we're going to show you things that you can do that actually make you become a squeaky wheel and stand out from the noise. And I'm going to tell you something else, which is that of those 2 million podcasts that I said exists, do you know? that many of them, a very high percentage of those podcasts, they're already dark, they're dead. Because there is something called pod fade, which is that most people who started a podcast, they stopped after seven episodes. So if you do episode eight, you're gonna be ahead of 70% of people doing a podcast. So that's how this girl who, didn't wear the retainer. That's how this girl is number 13 of all entrepreneurship podcasts and number like 38 of all business podcasts global and in the top 200s of all podcasts. That's how, because you have to get the landscape and you have to understand that this party is actually a small gathering in someone's backyard. It's not like just jumping into YouTube and we're going to, we're going to show you the ways that you can show up and make a bigger impact. Colleen, anything you want to add to that? She's turning on her sound. Yeah, just unmuting myself. Oh my gosh. It is, you guys, so unbelievably, I can't think of any other word to use than to say exciting. Like what you were drawn to come here because you knew either you already have a show and you want to just expand it like more and more and you can just feel what wants to come out from you in a bigger way or you knew that you felt the calling that you have something to share and your voice needs to be heard and your perspective needs to be heard and by the way and we have lots of examples of these that you'll see in your workbook you legit get to talk about anything your heart desires and that really is part of the secret sauce of what is going to make your show a runaway success is because when you're enthusiastic and so excited to share about something, it's literally impossible not to listen to someone else who is speaking from that space. So I don't care whether you're obsessed with how to put makeup on your face, whether you love baking sugar cookies, whether you are so into car engines and how to like fix them and tinker with them, literally anything under the sun, the world is your oyster when it comes to podcasting and you just get to freaking play. So good. And we're going to jump in. We're going to jump into that right now. We're going to talk about how you can come up with a topic and what kind of content you can make and how you can structure the content. And before I say that, I want to also add what I love about that when you said you can just play. Mm -hmm. So I was never the cool girl. I was always like the one who's like friends with everybody. Like I was friends with the kids who were in drama and I was also friends with the kids who were in student government and like whatever. And so it didn't appeal to me to get like a lot of lighting and filters and to try to make video content where I had to look a certain way. And I'll tell you something I just love about podcasts because it's very often, even for me right now, I'm working on my second book. I feel this pressure because it feels final, right? Like you turn it in. It's like, there is a moment where you put your pen down and then that's your book. Right. And it's like, well, on page 103, you said, right. Podcast is like a living organism. I can keep coming back to it. Right. I can say something, you know, episode 14 and the year two, and then in episode 35, I can say, oh yeah, I started thinking about it. Actually, I want to add this. And I want to talk about this. It's like this ongoing feeling of, I can keep coming back and iterating. So that feels like playful. And I think people can get writer's block but it's harder for people to get talkers block because the truth is we all do have a lot to say if we don't filter ourselves. And here's what I want to do right away with podcasting is take, take that permission slip and hand it to you on the not filtering, because here's the, here's the deal with podcasting. 
good luck trying to filter anyway. Like if you're a podcaster and your show is 25 minutes every episode or 40 or an hour, it's really hard to filter and try to sound like a version of yourself that's a perfect version. That's, I think, why people love podcasters, because even if I'm here and I'm talking about side hustles and entrepreneurship and that kind of culture, they inevitably wind up hearing about my weekend or they wind up hearing how like becoming the breadwinner was really cool on one level, but like totally killed my sex life. And then people want to listen more because they get to know you. Right. And it's just like with anything, if you have a friend who you care about and all of a sudden they're excited about Bruce Springsteen and they go to 15 shows, you're more excited about hearing about Bruce Springsteen from someone you already care about. And so I love that you don't have to look a certain way to be a podcaster. You don't have to filter. You, you can just be yourself. And I feel like, especially in this era where things feel so curated, I think it feels so refreshing to people to say, look, whether I agree with that person or not, I feel that that's who they are. And there's so few, and I, I asked my agent, Amanda, you know, she works at Gersh. I said, why is Joe Rogan as popular as he is, do you think? And she said, he's a person who's unapologetically himself. And the world, whether people agree with him or not, they appreciate a person who says, this is how I feel. And there's a period at the end of the sentence. And that's true about podcasters because it isn't a possible thing that you're going to filter yourself and have a podcast ongoing. So I think it, it's an opportunity also to let go of shame. It's an opportunity to have a point of view. And I say to Colleen, you know, we talk about this all the time. It's like, and if somebody doesn't like me because they get to know the real me, then they can exit, right? Their tax dollars don't go to me. They don't pay me to do what I do. And I think we all want belonging so badly that we will filter. And then how free do we feel? Like no matter how well you're doing in your work or how cute your kids look in their matching plaid outfits that you take in front of that perfect wreath on your front door, if all day long you're filtering yourself, you don't feel freedom and that sucks. And I think when you create something around something that you care about, whether you said like it's sugar cookies, my friend, Amy Tan, she just loves making things and scrapbooking but more power to her. That's what she likes. And so she built a podcast around being creative in that way. Good. Like you get to feel freedom and you can let go of the rest. So let's talk about how you can come up with what a topic could be like for your podcast. So right away, I just want to give you some examples of actual podcasts to start to turn the wheels in your mind, in your mind. And for those of you who already have a podcast and you came here to learn how to monetize a podcast, we are going to talk about that. I, I guarantee you, this is something I know so much about now because success leaves clues. And I've learned so much. It took us a year to hit a million downloads. Now it's five years. We're at 40 million. I have a feeling if you do have a podcast or you don't, you sticking around here this week, you're going to learn about 16 things that you, you're you grateful that you learned. But anyways, if you don't have one and you're thinking of what kind of title or what kind of content, and even if you do have a podcast, P.S., you can pivot and change the title on your podcast whenever you damn well please, which sometimes is actually a great idea. So these are some actual podcasts right now. There's a podcast called 10% Happier. It is hosted by Dan Harris. I've actually had him on my show. That podcast is a great title, 10% Happier, right? I think everybody could handle, I'd like to be 10% happier and I feel like I could accomplish that. And that's a great podcast. He's very vulnerable in that podcast. He starts out by talking about how on national TV, he had a panic attack. He needed to actually go off the air. And that's when he began to do some meditation work and to really come back to something that felt like well-being. Um, there is another podcast called The Dating Den, which is a podcast that's all about helping people hear real life stories of how people are dating and what they're going through. There's a podcast called Flipping Junkie Podcast, all about just like you would think, flipping things and making a profit and how we can sort of all get into that game. Uh, there's a there's a podcast called Organic Gardening Podcast. And you know, what's so cool is that we live in a time where everyone is a click away and people have already been finding themselves in groups of other people who are like-minded, like 
Pat Flynn told me that he actually also has an obsession with Legos and he goes to like Facebook groups that are for like adults that are obsessed with Legos. And it's like a huge part of his happiness. So you already have an audience for what you get excited about. And now it's about showing up and just letting them come to you because they already exist. When I started a podcast five years ago, I knew that I was really passionate about people getting to do creative work. And it turned out a lot of people were already looking for how could I monetize something that I love? Colleen, anything you want to add to this? It's really exactly what Kathy just said. How can you monetize something you love? It gets to be that simple. I think we're so trained into this society of we wake up, we go to school for like 12 years, and then maybe we go to more school and then we get like a job and we're supposed to do the job for like ever. And what if it just gets to be something that's almost like pinch me? I can't believe I get paid to like do this. And that's really what podcasting is a portal to, because let's face it, if you have a business, podcasting is probably one of the fastest ways to accelerate and grow that business. And if you don't have a business yet, podcasting is basically going to be the fastest way to create that business and allow you to monetize around your passion. So sometimes we get a bit hesitant because our brain goes, really? Does it really get to be that good? And it really, really does. And that's why you're here. And that's why we're here to help you start making steps towards that. I mean, it's just so cool what you just said, because if you really think about it, and by the way, it's amazing how our mind will say limiting things or sometimes hopefully expansive things, but either way, your mind finds evidence of what you tell it, it's true. So if you say, oh, that'll never happen, you'll think of nine experiences you had where things didn't work out, or you'll think of evidence of people around you who are frustrated and things are not working out. But if you say to yourself, what if that could happen? you'll actually find right away that your brain hands you evidence. And if you start looking this week, I am not the only person who gets to be myself and gets paid a lot of money to do this thing called having a podcast. There is a lot of evidence that this is already happening by people who are not as smart as you, not as sweet as you, maybe don't even have as much passion and enthusiasm, but execution will beat the inspiration every day, right? Everyone on my block might be inspired by something, but do they actually go and do it? No, because they get stuck in the dip. And we're going to talk about what that dip looks like. And somebody just posted a question in the chat. Well, what about people whose podcast started, but then they faded? Can we talk about why that is, but we're going to get into why that is and how you can revive it and how you can get your audience and grow your audience. So all of that is coming. Um, but one thing that is for sure, it's your story. It's your story that moves the needle. People say, oh, but Kathy, you know, uh, I understand that you are now a unicorn and you've had Matthew McConaughey, Deepak Chopra, and Chelsea Clinton on your show, that's not happening for me. And I wanna tell you good, good information, which is if you look behind the scenes at our download numbers, our numbers of downloads, they're not the, what you would expect. It's not that for every celebrity, that's our, our greatest you know, download numbers. In fact, quite often we had a guy from Missouri, Greg Franklin, who came on to tell a story about he, how he worked at a dog food factory and he stood in front of a machine that made plastic bags for dog food eight hours a day and started listening to the podcast and wrote in. And next thing we knew, I wanted to have him on the podcast because he started making cheesecake. I can't make this up. It's too good of a story. He got fired from the factory, calls his wife, says, I need to find another job. I'm so sorry. I just blew it. I lost health insurance. Now our three kids, we've got no health care. She said, Greg, do you know that Google just told me it's National Cheesecake Day? And he said, there's no way that's true. And she said, I think it's a sign that you were meant to get fired because you've been listening to this Kathy Heller podcast and you're supposed to be making cheesecake. So he wrote me, this is like the fourth message. He kept writing me, writing me, writing me. And he said, my wife and I decided we're going to open a 10 by 50 square feet little shop. And if we can make the rent, we'll keep the shop open for three months. And in the first day of business, there was a line around the block. They made three times the rent in the first day. I had him on the show. He told that story. That's one of our most downloaded episodes, more than Howard Schultz, who created Starbucks. Because human beings have a high EQ and words from the heart speak to the heart. 
And it is so inspiring to hear a guy who's 49 years old with three kids in high school talk about finding happiness. It's more inspiring than listening to a billionaire, even though the Howard Schultz story is so freaking good. And he grew up in public housing. And that story is one for the books. Even still, Howard Schultz feels about 1,000 steps away from everybody else. And this guy living his best life doesn't. So don't you tell me that your story is not magical or that there is a reason why you're never going to be where I am because you don't have a celebrity guest list. You don't need a celebrity guest list. Two years ago, I had a fourth pregnancy. Now all my three pregnancies, my three daughters, all were from multiple IVF rounds. That's right. I went through 12 rounds of IVF. I have three amazing daughters. Thank God. I got pregnant out of the blue during COVID. I've never gotten pregnant without treatment. And we had a baby boy and it turned out he had a terminal illness that gave him a hole in his heart and a hole in his brain. And we found that around my 20th week, which was an actual living nightmare that I couldn't wake up from. And I had to go through a process to terminate this pregnancy, which was gut wrenching. And I told that story on the podcast with tears streaming down my face. It was one of our most downloaded episodes. And I thought this is so surreal because it has nothing to do with what the podcast is about. And people said that they may not have experienced that, but it allowed them to, to handle and, and make space for grief that they had in their own life. And they appreciated the vulnerability. We have lost the art of connecting all day long. It's like, connect, go into social, like this post, comment here. And meanwhile, loneliness is more than it's ever been. If you have the courage to start a podcast where you let people into your living room and talk to them just like they're your best friend from camp, you're going to find that the impact you make is so incredible. And this is how you will grow your show because people will become obsessed with you because they will feel that for one brief moment out of their week, somebody has the willingness to show up and be present. And that's how you break through the noise. And that's how you become a big voice in podcasting. So it's your story. It's your uniqueness because it's unique that somebody tells that story. Even if a million other people went through that, they don't have your specific vulnerability and perspective, but you do stop keeping that to yourself. So I want to give you some questions that you can think about so that you could uncover your podcast topic. So here we go. Number one, something you've been through. Just like I just said, I started my podcast around something else I had been through, which was a girl. I was a girl who had a day job in Los Angeles. I had gotten a record deal. I didn't tell you this part of the story. This was the early part of the story. I had gotten a record deal. I got dropped from Interscope. I had been sitting with Lady Gaga at Sunset Sounds and she was recording Paparazzi. I'm your biggest fan. I'll follow you until, you know, the song. And I was like, she's good. That girl can sing. Anyways, I got dropped from the label six weeks later. And that's when everybody told me to go get a real job. Go be realistic. So I got a real job and uh, I worked for a guy in Brentwood who owned shopping centers. Yeah. And um, he worked in commercial real estate and I made meetings happen for him. And I felt like I was going to die a death inside every day. And that's when I decided to stop doing that. And I asked myself a question, which was, all right, I get that I'm not Beyonce, but I came close. So is there any other way I could do what I love and make a living? And that's when I actually that week read an article on music licensing, started licensing my music to film and TV. That's where our story began today. And I started a career licensing music to McDonald's commercials and TV shows, like I told you. And so when I started the podcast, oh, I knew the pain of creative people who were right now selling insurance or standing as a barista when they were made to write a play or design costumes. So that's why I started the podcast because usually your audience is you. If you lost weight, because you were emotionally eating and you finally figured out that it was this level of forgiveness you had to have around whoever, that's how you put the Oreos down. 
your audience is you, they're still eating the Oreos and they don't even maybe have the awareness of what's causing them to eat because they tried every other diet. If you figured out how to handle a very hard situation with your son, because your son was taking Ritalin for ADHD and somehow, some way, it still didn't feel like a fit. And then you found yourself in a mindfulness class for kids and it helped him. And you want to tell other moms, your audience is you before you found that class. I'm actually using examples right now of people who I know who have podcasts around those topics. They just came to my mind. So how you uncover your topic is either something you've been through. What about something that you're enthusiastic about? Like my sister-in-law, I don't know if she's watching right now, but she's obsessed with the Brady Bunch, obsessed. I said, Jen, you're sitting on gold. The way you light up, how you know, no joke. Like she knows every episode and everything that happened and every walk on guest star. I said, this is a podcast. You're literally holding back gifts from the world because when I hear you talk about it and I didn't really grow up watching it. I know Sunshine Day, everybody's laughing. I don't know, I don't know what like she knows. I'm like, you could have a whole world and then you could have events and people would pay to come be around other people who want to talk about it. And then you could have like those actual like people, actors could come to the, like, oh my God. And she's like, yeah, yeah, no. I'm like, no, don't say no. I, like, I revisit it with her like once every month, every other month. I'm like, you have to do it. It could be something you're enthusiastic about. If time and money was not an object, here's another one. What would you be talking about? If time and money was on an object, do you just love travel? Do you love helping people find really cool place, places to travel to? Like you could do an episode on the cute little places to, to find in Portland, Oregon or Athens, Georgia or Mykono. I mean, what do you just like love? Like do this for, you know, it's funny. I had Martha Beck on the podcast a few times, but she wrote a book called The Joy Diet, which is not about food. It's just about joy, having joy in your diet, having joy every day. And she said, human beings are incredible people because she said she went to Harvard for her sociology doctorate. And she said, I've never seen people who are in free cultures, free societies where people are free to do what they want and they don't do things that make them happy. Like if something would be fun to do, maybe that's a good reason to start a podcast about it because you're just obsessed with having this conversation about children's literature. And you just think it would be fun to spend an hour of your week recording one episode about Anne of Green Gables or talking to somebody else about why she loved this book or what, how it changed her life. Yeah, that's a good reason too, to come up with a topic. And the last one is maybe a pain in the world that bothers you. You know, my, I mentioned my friend Jenny before she became a vegan for the animals. She did it for the animals. I have a feeling that she has enough empathy for animals that she could probably talk for hours about that. So those are some juicy prompts. Anything else, Colleen, you want to add to that? I think really just allowing, like we said, the space that it can be anything. If you guys actually just went out and started Googling around or going to like Spotify or Apple podcasts and searching through the topics, it will blow your mind how many podcasts there are on how like a myriad of topics. So truly, truly watch that voice inside your head. That's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know how that would go to this place or how that could be monetized or how that will lead there. The most important thing at this point, when you're playing with ideas and kind of leaning in different directions is truly in your heart. What is just so freaking fun for you? And that really is where it can begin and end, right? Or like, like Kathy was saying too, how do you inspire people because of your experience? Or what do people come ask you questions about all of the time? And just realize that this gets to be something that is so nourishing and life-giving. And from it being that for you, it's also then going to extend and be that for someone else. Yeah. I love that. I love that. It's already giving you life in the chat. I see people feeling inspired. Okay. So let's go over another aspect of podcasting, which I think is really helpful to really see the model in, in your mind's eye, the format. Sometimes people get overwhelmed because they think a podcast has to be an hour. Or I thought that first day when I was sitting in my closet, I thought a podcast is solo. I actually, it took me a few weeks to realize I could interview people. I think because in my mind, I thought, well, I don't know, aren't I supposed to just broadcast my 
thoughts and feelings. And I thought, I won't be able to get a guest every week. Like, it's amazing how we'll think a thought and then we'll just close a door rather than being like, but wait, maybe I could get a guest. Like, so you don't have to do it either way, right? With podcasting, it doesn't have to be an hour. My friend, Chris Gillibo, his podcasts are between five minutes and 15 minutes. Now, what does he do? He doesn't do either of those things. He doesn't talk about his opinions for an hour or interview a guest. His podcast is all about having a side hustle. So it's somewhat related to mine. And his is so simple. Every time he has a show, he tells a story of somebody who started a side hustle and was successful with it, which gives people tremendous value. They, they just love it. He told a story about this woman, Teresa Greenway, who was, uh, she was cleaning in a motel with two kids, single mom. And her daughter told her mom, like, we need to do something because her younger brother had autism and he needed more resources than he was able to get. And so her daughter says to the mom, you should teach people how to make sourdough bread. And she's like, what? That's like the last, she's like, I'm already working two jobs. There's no other way. She's like, no, no, but you have something else you could monetize. So her daughter with her own, her daughter's phone filmed her mom teaching sourdough bread. They uploaded it to Udemy and then it did well. So they created another class called Extreme Sourdough and it did well. And so within like a year, she made $85,000 from this class on sourdough bread. That was one of Chris's episodes. It took him about five minutes to tell that story. And people were in tears, in tears. So that's his podcast is a story like that a day. That's it. So you get to decide, are your episodes 10 minutes, five minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 45? Do they change? Because they can change. You could have an episode that's 26 minutes and then you could have an episode that's 11 minutes and you could have an episode that's an hour. You could have a Monday episode and that's it, just every Monday. You could have an episode on Mondays that's you telling a story and it's five minutes. And on Thursdays, it's an interview. You could do two episodes a week. Oh my goodness. Isn't it fun to think about the different ways that you can mix and match and do this? Now, I will tell you that the podcast chart is privy to, it has an algorithm just like all the apps. So why is it interesting to know that? It's interesting because the more you post on your podcast feed, the more you tick up in the algorithm, which means when people listen to other episodes of other shows, you'll come up in the recommended other suggested shows. It also means you'll go up in the chart. So it's a great idea to have two episodes a week, even if one of them is five minutes, even if one of them is you reading other people's letters who people write in fans of your show, even if you start out with 11 fans, but you ask them for their questions. And we're going to talk more as this week goes on, on how to build an engaged audience. But we decided about six months in to add a second episode a week and to feature some of our listeners at the end of that episode, which helped a tremendous amount to bring more engagement because we read letters from people listening to our show. So let's also talk more about the format. Um, what are the kinds of things that you can do in the episodes? I've kind of been like, saying them here and there, but let's talk about it. You can tell stories like I talked about with Chris. You could give advice, guidance. You might have some advice on how to put your kids to sleep, right? Or whatever it is. Um, you can share your journey. Just your journey might be something people are really interested in. Um, and you can do interviews, like I said, with people who are famous or not famous at all. Just people who you think have a story worthy of sharing. Colleen, anything else that you want to add to that? Yeah, I think just, I really can't emphasize enough that being impressive on your show is not about having the most knowledge. It's not about the most famous guests. It's not about if it's this length or that length. You're the most impressive when you're in resonance. That's all it is. And resonance is when you are just in an open heart, you're vulnerable, you're your true self. And we know, right? We know when we're our true self and we know when we're like holding for, are people going to think I'm boring? Are they going to disagree with my opinion? Am I going to get backlash from this? Like 
then we're not in our resonance because we're caught right in that dance with like, but what will everyone think or how will the people around me react? And we don't have to stay playing there, right? We get to just be like, that can all exist and that gets to be fine, but I get to just be me over here. And that's the only thing you need to bring. And that's the magic. So there is no, but what's the best? Is it the 30 minutes twice a week? Or is it like the interview and solo mixed? Or like, which which concoction gives me like the best brownies? And it's going to be different for all of you because it depends on your resonance. It depends on what feels most aligned to you. Like what feels, oh, I'm so drawn here. It's like, then that's your recipe. And someone else's recipe will be different. And that's why it's all perfect and all good because at the end of the day, it's the resonance that matters. It's so true. If you heard nothing else, I'm going to give Colleen the real brownie. I think that's all you needed to hear today because love is the most impressive thing. And I think we are so wired to truth that we feel it when somebody is coming from residence, when they're coming from a place where they're actually present. And it is interesting, you know, Colleen hates when I say this, but she does have a PhD. She's her background is being a therapist and therapists will tell you all day long that people walk away and say, that's the best conversation I ever had in my life. And the therapist is trained to listen, right? The therapist is trained to make space for the person on the couch to feel safe, to share what is inside of them already. So why then do they walk out and say, that's the best conversation I ever had? It's not because of all the things the therapist said. It's because the therapist did this thing called, I'm holding the space for you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like one of the gifts of growing up in my house, my parents got divorced and my mom struggled with her mental health and was very, 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 very sad most of the days of my childhood. And when my dad left, there was like a decade of time where he didn't connect with me. I didn't know where he was. And he left my mom for like that other woman. And I saw my mom's pain. And I think if anything is the reason for my success in my podcast, it's I really genuinely want people to feel like they're not invisible. When my dad left for another woman, my mom felt about this big and she felt that she was invisible and she felt that everything she had poured into that marriage was worthless and that she had given the best years of her life for nothing. And then I felt pretty invisible too, because my dad started another family. And it's like that dear Evan Hansen story where like he had new kids and everything like that. And I felt like the most invisible thing. And I thought no one deserves that. And so my friends will say this and Colleen will say this, like I hold space for people. And that's kind of my legacy is that I, I know people will say like, I'm a dog person. I'm a cat person. I'm really a people person. I would adopt every adult. Um, I think everybody needs more love. And when people come into my Zoom room or they step in, you know, we used to do them in live before COVID. And then we do a lot on Zoom, which is easy and perfect. I just want them to feel right away. Like they don't have to jump through any hoops. And so instead of reading notes or trying to get everything right or have the podcast go a certain way, I just sort of douse them in like a thousand emoji hearts and they know that it's true. And then they say, God, I've never shared my story like that. Or I really appreciate that you listened. And so what I can tell you is in addition to podcasting being just such a really wonderful creative outlet for me, the amount of business I didn't expect from the opportunities of creating friends through podcasts is incredible. And who I've become as a person because of my friendships is really probably the biggest gift to my kids because James Clear wrote this book, Atomic Habits, and he said, the most important habit is who you spend time with. And as I started the show, and again, in the beginning, I didn't have celebrities on, but I was choosing people who had the courage to go for things that they wanted. And whether this guy, Greg, owned a bakery in San Francisco, or this woman, Maggie, had pushed through resistance and become a female director in Hollywood, 
I started to see evidence all the time of courage and possibility. And then we would become friends and it just grew until I was friends with authors like Deepak Chopra and Marianne Williamson. But it's amazing how, when we stop worrying about our ego and how we look and how we're coming across, and instead we just show up with this love bomb, everyone is impressed by love. Like love is the most impressive thing. No one is really impressed by how smart you are. No one really cares how much you know, unless they know how much you care. So I think that there is a huge opportunity here to widen your social circle, to contribute even just to the guest, forget the listener. You know, people say, how do you make a show that resonates? Make your guest feel heard because that comes through. Don't talk over people. Don't worry about yourself. Just listen, right? Just listen and think about your audience. And people will say, well, what if I run out of content? And my mentor early on, a guy named Tim Street, he was early in the podcasting space. He said to me, you'll never run out of content. I said, why? How? I was already worried on episode six. He said, because you keep asking yourself, what is the pain point of my listener? And it probably won't change. It's probably that same one pain point. And you can keep talking about it over and over and over and over and over. Because if it's something that you need to hear, you can never hear it enough. Like how many moms need to hear the message that they're good enough and more than good enough? Or how many people need to hear that they shouldn't overthink it because whatever they have is perfect enough. It's, they, you know, whatever the message is. And so with my audience, the pain point was about people who had something creative they wanted to do and they needed to get over that resistance. And so I've just continued to think about where was I when I was working that day job and I was living out some reality version of there's no other option for me. What was my pain point? What was blocking me? And I keep going back to that girl with the golden handcuffs at that desk in Brentwood. And I know that she's listening. And so I keep talking to her. And one by one, we keep moving people into action. This one opened a floral shop. This one started a bead store. This one started a, a glass blowing business. This one is opening an Airbnb and she's you know hosting people in a bed and breakfast. Great, amazing. So you know, if you look back at your life, what your pain point was in your marriage, with your health, with your entrepreneurship journey, with your, um, with your pets, with your uh, parent who was aging and dying of Alzheimer's, like you know what's up with that. All right, let's talk really quickly about gear and then we're, gonna, we're just gonna sort of like finish up for today. Are you guys having fun, by the way? Are you excited to come back tomorrow and do things together? I told you, was I wrong or right? Did I tell you that you would get value out of this, whether or not you decide at the end, you're like, I wanna be with Kathy for a couple months. It's like, I promise. I promise you're going to get value out of this workshop. Okay, great. I'm glad to hear it. And then for those of you who want to do more things together, we will talk to you about why we have a whole experience where you can step-by-step -step walk with us and start and implement and create your podcast with us. But that is separate. Let's talk about the gear. I don't want to burst your bubble, but these are, and Colleen actually the other day, she was like, I think it might be time to get different headphones, but it's fine. <laughs> um, these are my daughter's headphones. They were $12. I've been using them for three years. So those are my headphones still. And, um, embarrassing, but true Colleen, I did it again last night and I promised you I would stop, but maybe for the purpose of this, this is why I did it again yeah. uh, on my phone is how I record a lot of my podcasts. Say, hey, this is Kathy Heller on the voice memo free app that's native on my smartphone, on my iPhone. That's how I record. Hey, this is Kathy Heller. Welcome back to the podcast. Yeah. Um, I record a lot like that. If I have a guest, I do it just like this on Zoom with this microphone, which cost me about $85. Now, now I will tell you, I want to be savvier at this point. 650 episodes in, 40 million downloads. I'm like, I think we should level up. So I might do that, but it didn't stop me. 
from growing the hell out of a podcast by spending about $150 on all of the tech combined. So you can buy any um, mic on Amazon. There's so many good ones now. And you can use Zoom, which most of us, because of the pandemic, already have a lot of experience with. And then that Zoom goes into whatever you set it to go into, like your Dropbox or something like that. And you can then upload it. And on your checklist, if you go to kathyhoe.com slash text, there's a checklist with even more of these bullet points. And it's a really good PDF of a lot more extra bells and whistles. So you should go download it, kathyhoe.com slash text and get the um, PDF. But it, it really is that simple. And the reason why I say that I don't want to burst your bubble is because I think we like to think it's hard because it's a good excuse not to do it. Mm-hmm. But what if it's not hard? (laughs) What if the hard part is in here? What if the hard part is the courage to start it? Then you have no excuse, right? So yeah, you could do this. Um, I want to tell you right now that at the bottom of the workbook, there are three homework questions. Number one is why are you excited to start a podcast? Number two is what kind of show format given today's content would you want to feel? What do you feel drawn to? Like one episode a week, how long do you want to do an interview show? Just, just, we're just riffing here just to start to get the wheels turning. And the third question is, what do you hope people would get from listening to your show? Now, if you do this homework and there will be a thread inside our Facebook group where you can post the answers to your homework. If you do that, you will be entered into another giveaway and we are going to give you the following. We're going to pick three of you, which we'll announce tomorrow who do your homework and you're each going to get a $50 Starbucks gift card. And I would love it if you would go listen to the Howard Schultz interview on how he built Starbucks, because I did that interview and it's so good what he has to say, like, go listen to a billionaire who came from public housing, tell you things it's worth it. So $50 Starbucks gift card and Kendra Scott, who is now a billionaire. I just interviewed her. That episode will be out soon. And that means you have to subscribe to my podcast. You can listen to that episode. Uh, We'll be giving away a pair of earrings. And if you're like, I don't wear earrings or I don't have holes in my ears, you can give them away to somebody who would probably really appreciate that. And that probably would feel even better than having the earrings is to give them to somebody you love. So we're going to do that. Now, Colleen has, or if she doesn't have, she'll have the names for me. Sure, she has them. We want to right now start the giveaway party because we ask you guys to subscribe to my podcast and leave a review in order to enter the raffle. But as I just said, there's already another way to win goodies. So every day this week, you're going to have an opportunity to do homework. And in doing your homework, you're going to be entering a raffle for more goodness. And just by showing up for this boot camp and commenting on every live, If you show up for the whole thing, which would probably be a good use of time anyway, you'll be entered to win an Apple watch. And I'm going to give two of you Apple watches at the end. Colleen, tell us who won the prize bundle, which consisted of Beats earphones, um, a Yeti microphone, and a Marc Jacobs tote, which we just thought was super cute, which would allow you to carry your stuff. Go ahead, Colleen. Yeah. So the first winner is Janet Bergamo. So congratulations, Janet. Number two is Christina Summers. And number three is Brett Bennett Hawks. Amazing. Congrats, congrats, congrats. And thank you for subscribing and reviewing my podcast. I will tell you what, that the asterisk on doing your homework and being entered in to win the $50 Starbucks gift card and the Kendra Scott earrings, which we're going to pick through three of you, is that you need to subscribe to my podcast and leave a review. And I'll tell you why because we're going to talk about monetizing your podcast and growing your audience. And you want to be familiar with how people subscribe and review so that you can do that yourself. And what sense would it make for you to learn from someone whose podcast you've never listened to? If you go to my podcast and listen and you go, this does not feel like something that I like, I would keep coming to the boot camp. I would come to the boot camp because you go, I like her. I like the way she works her craft. So I feel like you should be listening to it anyway, and it's free. So subscribe and review the podcast and do your homework. Colleen, tell them in case they don't know where they can find the workbook with the homework attached. Yeah. So the gals are going to drop that for you in the link comments. They're going to magically do that for me now. Uh, But kathyheller.com forward slash TTP and the number one 
is like a short link if you want to get to it. It's also going to be posted in with the homework. So you'll see a thread go up just after we hop off that will have that workbook linked to it as well as where you post your homework and we'll email it to you too. So it'll be in lots of places. Right. So TTP stands for time to podcast and one is for day one. So if you go to kathyhow.com slash TTP one, you'll get the workbook and the homework is at the end. And if you want to enter that raffle, you will post your answers inside of this Facebook group. Um, I hope that you guys had so much fun today. If you did, I would love it. If you take a screenshot right now of me and Colleen and you post it on your social media and share one thing or a word that you're coming away with. Cause I love to go and watch these and look, and I will repost a bunch of them um, because also it might entice one of your friends or family members to come and take this free boot camp, which feels to me like we're having a lot of fun in here. I mean, it's amazing to me, your kindness and the level of just goodness in this chat. I mean, all of us have spent years, right? Online in social media groups. And there's just such positivity. I just want to say thank you because I am extremely genuine and vulnerable. And so is Colleen. And it feels really good to have a group of people who have come here to just have an open heart and to be kind. I want you to know, I'm going to leave you with this, that I believe it is my belief that every one of us came to this world because we're assigned. We were meant to make the world more whole, to make our to make the lives of other people better. And I think you know that. And I think the greatest pain that we have is when we're not living out that potential. And I think we make great the enemy of good. And we say to ourselves, why bother starting a podcast or doing X, Y, and Z if it's not for sure that I'm going to have millions of downloads or whatever it is. And I would say, what if you turn that around and said, how many people's lives could I touch by the end of the day, is it possible that I can make a difference for seven people? And if I could, would that be a worthwhile day? Like ask yourself truly, would it feel worthwhile if you told a story or made a space or even just the person you interviewed, if you made their day feel better because you loved on them? Like, does that feel like something that makes the world more whole? To me, it really does. To me, podcasting is a space where there is a tremendous amount of intimacy and a tremendous amount of connection in a world that feels very broken and very lonely. And so I think this is the time. That's why we call this, it's time to podcast. And I also think, especially for women, we need to take the mic. You know, when I started podcasting, there was about 12% of all podcasts hosted by women. Now I think it's a whopping like 20 something percent. Last time I checked, we were more than 50% of the earth's population and our stories are just being drowned out. And it is a time where I think the time is up and women need to speak and share and create community. So the leadership seat is available. And I think there's a tremendous amount of other gifts that come from having a point of view, establishing authority, putting your excitement, your enthusiasm and your story in the world. So I love that we get to do this. I told you this will be super fun. And um, we're going to be back tomorrow. And if you keep coming back, you'll be entered to win an Apple Watch. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about how to grow an audience. And on day three, we're going to talk about how to monetize your podcast. I loved this. I really do. Colleen, thank you for being just the best. And I hope you guys have an amazing rest of the day.